Welcome back to Dare to Call Him Friend. And today, we should be committed. There's probably quite a few unbelievers who think that about we who follow Christ. But if we're going to take God's example, then we're going to need to be committed. I love the book of Genesis and Exodus as they contain epic stories of God's unconditional love. God remained faithful, although his children betrayed him countless times. He refused to break his covenant with his people, even when they broke his heart. When they embarrassed him before the nations, he didn't disown them. His mercy outweighed his judgment. When his scalpel of discipline was needed, it was swift and exact cutting to the root of the disease without killing the patient. Yahweh held the stars in the skies, governed the ebbs and surges of the tides, ruled and reigned over all creation on earth and in the heavens, and yet he watched over his beloved children with the tenderness of a doting father as they roamed through the desert. From their first breath, to their last, they did not lack clothing, shelter, or food. He stayed true to his word. He never made a promise he would not keep. In a world where commitment and promises are made and broken at a whim, God calls us to represent his faithfulness on earth. He calls us to be a people of our word. He asks us to follow through on our commitments even when circumstances change and commitments now become sacrifices. He expects our model to be the same as his. A promise made is a promise kept. While we are encouraged to count the cost, we are not encouraged to be miserly with our time and our resources. The truth is, the day we committed our lives to Christ is the day that we gave up the right to exempt ourselves from his service. John 15, 14, you are my friends if you do what I command you. God's empowering grace accompanies any task, any commitment, and any sacrifice he asks of us. 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9 to 10. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Father God, how can we possibly give enough thanks for your faithfulness and your devotion? We thank you for your integrity and your sacrifice. Help us to be a people of our word. Give us the courage to see past our personal comforts when you call us into seasons of sacrificial service. May our yes always be yes and amen. And may the way that we live our lives be a constant reflection to others of that steadfast commitment that you have towards us.